Hello, I'm Sarah, and this is episode one of the Sarah Seams podcast. Hello, and happy new year. I'm recording this on January 1st, 2023, which feels crazy to say. Um, my name's Sarah. I'm the maker behind the Sarah Seams podcast. And I'm really excited to be trying this. I've been sharing my makes on Instagram um, and Ravelry for a while, but one of my goals for 2023 is to get more involved in the crafting community, both online and in person. So the way I'm planning to do that online is by creating this podcast. And uh, the way I'm planning to do it in person is by hopefully attending a local knit night or sewing group. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping to find that soon and I'll keep you posted if I do. Um, I'm based in Columbus, Ohio. I live here with my partner, Troy, and our two cats, Alex and Moo, who are very bad, but we love them very much. I'll pop a picture in. Um, yeah, I will admit I'm kind of jumping in the deep end here. I just recently started watching a lot of knitting podcasts and I'm just the kind of person who has to just like when I see something like that, I have to dive in and try it for myself. So here I am <laughs> and um, I'm excited. I hope that you all enjoy seeing my makes. Um, I'm planning to follow what seems to be the standard format of sharing finished objects, works in progress and acquisitions. And then at the end of each episode, I hope to share just a couple things that I'm loving with you right now that aren't necessarily sewing related. Um, and please forgive me because I have extensive notes here. <laughs> Didn't want to forget anything. Um, yeah, so a bit of background about me. Um, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio. I went to college here for fashion design and I do work as a full-time designer. Um, after I graduated, I lived in New York for about five years, which was such a fun experience. Um, and in 2019, I moved back to Columbus and I've been here ever since. And I feel like there's a very vibrant making community in Columbus and hopefully in the future, I'll be able to share more about that in some of our local shops and whatnot. Um, if you're interested in following along with my makes, you can follow me on Instagram at Sarah underscore seams or on Ravelry at Sarah Ripple, and I'll put those up on the screen. So without any further ado, I'll jump into what I'm wearing, which is also my first finished object. So we'll just start finished objects. All right, so starting for finished objects, um, I will get into what I'm wearing in just a second, but I just wanted to say, um, I have had the past couple of weeks off of work, so I've been extremely productive. I will not normally have this many finished objects, but today I do have five. Um, and I plan to cover sewing, knitting, and a little bit of quilting here and there on the podcast. So um, I do have two finished sewing objects, two knits, and a quilt to show you today. But like I said, I normally won't have this much, so forgive me if this is a little bit of a supersized first episode. So to jump in, I am wearing the Closet Core NYX dress. Um, this is a fairly new release from Closet Core Patterns. It does go up to a 60 inch bust and a 63 inch hip. Um, I made the size 1820, so I am an 18 in the bust and a 20 in the waist and hips, so I graded that. Um, and I kind of was approaching this as like a wearable muslin. Um, and this is made from an old Ikea duvet cover, actually, that I got at a local thrift store, but it's a cotton rayon blend of sateen. So you can see it has a bit of shine to it, which is really nice. So I don't know if you would suspect that it's an old Ikea duvet cover, at least I hope not. Um, I'll pop some footage in so you can see what it looks like um, from you know every direction and when it's moving. Um, this is a really nice pattern. Shockingly, I've been sewing for a very long time, but I just in the past two to three years really started making most of my own clothes again. Um, you know, I made clothes when I was in design school and obviously I designed for my job, but it's different to make clothes for yourself. 
and Closet Core Patterns is like one of the biggest names out there. And shockingly, this was the first of their patterns that I'd actually made. Um, and it's really lovely. The instructions are very easy to follow. I definitely would recommend it. I think it's a really nice dress with a lot of interesting details. So it has like this lovely shearing um, at the shoulder and it has this really, I don't know if you can see, this really nice um, button placket. Um, I did make fabric covered buttons. I don't know if you can see there. And I actually have a tutorial on my Instagram for how to make um, fabric covered buttons. And I can link that below for anyone who might be interested. Um, let me see here. So a couple of things I would change um, if I make this again, and I think that I will. I definitely wanna make another version in the spring in a more floaty like floral fabric maybe. I think that would be lovely. So um, size wise, I think it's really good. I think I have a very short torso, so I might take a little bit of length out of the back next time. I feel like it's a little bit more blousey than I would like it to be, um, but I will definitely still wear this. I really like how it fits. Um, but that's pretty much the only size adjustment I would make. Two other adjustments I would make. Next time I would add the third skirt panel. So it is meant to be more of a like midi to maxi dress. And since I was treating this one like a wearable muslin, I just omitted the final um, skirt tier, but I love it as a shorter version too. It's really cute that way. Um, the main thing is the neckline binding. So it has a bias bound neckline that gets turned to the inside, if you can see that, and then stitched down. So the way they have you sew it on is you create your bias strip and you fold it in half and press it. And then you take both raw edges and sew them down and then fold the entire thing to the back and stitch it down. And this is a method I use a lot for like quilt binding, um, but I don't like it as much for anything that has like a more dramatic curve. So like this little corner of the neckline is a pretty dramatic curve. And you can see there's a bit of rippling along here. And I just think you don't get as much credit for your bias binding with that method as you do with the more traditional like quarter fold method where you just sew one raw edge down and then you fold the edges in and turn it back. And then I think it just gives you a little bit of a stretchier edge because it's thinner. Um, with the method they suggest, your fold is a little bit chunkier and you don't get as much stretch. So that's the main thing I would change, but the pattern is super well written and I think it's very easy to follow. I would say this would be a good pattern for like an adventurous beginner. Um, but yeah, the Closet Core NYX, highly recommend it. I think I'll be making a couple more. Um, my second finished object. Um, so I recently made the Aura Pinafore by Soften Studio, and I'll pop a picture of that in here. Um, Soften Studio is run by Melody, and she makes really lovely, elegant patterns, um, and I've been wanting to make the Aura Pinafore for a long time. I think, unfortunately, it actually has just been discontinued, um, but she, saw my aura pinafore and reached out to me on Instagram to ask if I wanted to test her new pattern um, because she saw some quilting on my profile. And so she uh, sent me a copy of her new pattern, which is a quilted tote bag. So this is the Soften Studio tote bag. Um, and you can see I did kind of a pinwheel quilting on mine. I believe the pattern comes with a really simple like um, gridded quilt quilting design, but it's very pretty. Um, I just kind of went a little bit in a different direction with my quilting. And this is made from um, a thrifted denim. I believe it used to be a curtain. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you can't tell, I like to get a lot of my textiles secondhand or thrifted when I can. Um, and I just had this in stash. So when she sent me the pattern, um, I was perfectly, I was so excited to make it because I was like, I have everything I need. You know, I had already the quilt batting from quilting um, that I've done before. So this was a super quick and easy, easy project to whip up. I think I did the whole thing in one day, including the quilted panel. So yeah, it's lovely. It has these really plush quilted straps, which makes it very comfortable to carry around. And then on the inside, 
It has this really cute little drop pocket um, for your phone and it has little ties to close it as well. So yeah, it's a really interesting construction. Um, you make basically the big quilted outer panel, um, which she gives really good tips on how to do the quilting and walks you through that whole process. The only thing I would suggest to add is if you wanna get more of the like quilty crinkle and get some more credit for your quilting that um, before you cut out your piece, you just throw it in the dryer and tumble it on high heat for like 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and that really helps to like bring out the texture of the quilting. But yeah, it's a really lovely large bag. I've been using it a ton since I finished it and I highly recommend it. Um, you kind of pull the outer layer to the inside and you get this nice like quilted facing edge along the top. It just has very clever construction um, and all of Melody's patterns are really lovely. So highly recommend this if you want a quick project and it's a good scrap buster too if you have like half to a yard of something a little bit heavier weight in your stash that you've been wanting to use up and it would be so cute in a patchwork version um there's like endless possibilities for this so uh yeah an excellent new pattern from soften studio highly recommend that one okay so those are my two sewing FOs and I'm going to move on to knitting now. So I've been sewing for a really long time, but I'm sorry, that is my cat meowing. <laughs> if you can hear that, that's a uh, moo. Let me, one second. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> he might come back. I don't know. Um, he likes to yell at me when he can't come in the room. So knitting is uh, newer for me. I have tried it multiple times throughout my life, tried to pick it up and it never really stuck. Um, I think I always started with a really simple project like a washcloth or like a garter scarf or something. And I think what happened was I just got bored um, and I didn't really learn to love knitting until I started trying more challenging projects. Um, really it was socks that got me into like a deep obsession with knitting that has lasted for the past year and a half and I only continue to become more obsessed with it. So yeah, that's kind of how I got into knitting more. Um, socks were my gateway and I do still knit a lot of socks. I knit at least one pair of socks a month pretty much for the past year and a half and I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. <laughs> so uh, my first finished object for knitting is the Grow Hat by Fiber Tails. And here it is. So this is, this is so cute. I love this pattern. This is also a new pattern. Uh, it just came out like a week or two ago. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to knit that this weekend. It's so cute. So it's knitted um, from the bottom up, from the brim up. And it has this little one by one rib cuff and then it goes into this lovely um, leaf detail stitching, which these are actually made basically as cables, um, which was interesting to me. And then you start the decreases in the hat. So I made this with um, a really nice yarn that I picked up over the summer at a little tiny family farm in Maine called Nez and Scott Farm. And it's a little family farm store where they sell, you know, their produce and meat, cheese, breads. Um, but the second story of the farmhouse is a yarn shop where they make all their own yarn. Um, they spin it, they dye it. Uh, and it was so, so cool um, and nice to just like stumble upon this thing in rural Maine. So this is their Angora Mohair Wool Blend um, in the natural color. So you can see it's kind of a really lovely um, gray brown with little flecks of white. Um, and it has a bit of a halo. So yeah, I knit this so fast. I knit this in two days. <laughs> I started it on a Sunday and I finished it on Monday. Super quick and easy project. Um, this yarn is very rustic. <laughs> it still has a bit of, you can feel there's a bit of like spinning oil in it. And I do feel like you lose the motifs a little bit. Um, I've definitely seen some other versions where you get more credit for them, but 
I still think it's, you know, it's subtle, but it's still really lovely. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. Um, I would say it's just one size. And if anything, it's a little snug. So, and that could be, I think I actually, it calls for a DK weight and I used a worsted weight because I had it in my stash. <laughs> so that could be part of the reason. It's a little snug, but it's not too tight. It's just snug. So I would say if you prefer a more snug hat um, or if you have issues with gauge in your hats and they end up too big, I think this is a great pattern. And I really, really love how it turned out. I'm definitely going to make another one. All right, so my last knit finished object, um, and I should say all this is from the past two weeks, um, cause like I said, I've had some time off. So I have finished a lot of projects, which was my goal for the winter break. So I'm happy about it, but there's a lot. So my last project are the Kutar socks by Sari Norlin. My last socks of 2022, which is exciting. I think I knit 13 pairs of socks this year. Um, yeah, so these are the Kutar socks. You can see that. So I'll just show one so you can see the detail. Um, it's a really beautiful lace pattern, if my camera will focus. Um, and it has these little wrapped stitches, which are an interesting detail. I had never, I had never done that before. Um, I feel like every time, I love to like learn something new in every project. Um, that's why I love to knit more like complicated lace or cables or, I don't know, I just, I kind of need that like learning aspect of it to keep me interested in the project. Um, but yeah, so these, uh, most of Sari Nordland's sock patterns come in, are come in two sizes, but it's entirely based on gauge. So she usually recommends a 2.5 mm needle. Um, but basically if you want a larger size, you can either knit looser or you can go up a needle size. So I usually just knit on the 2.5 mm at whatever my own gauge is. And I haven't had any issues. I knit a lot of her patterns, um, but I do have kind of larger feet, like nine and a half, ten. 10. So I would say if you need a much smaller sock, you might want to go down a needle size. Um, cause these usually fit me pretty well just with the suggested needle size. And I think I have a pretty, like normal, like I don't tend to knit super loose or super tight. Um, this yarn is, was purchased at a local yarn store here in Columbus called um, Yarn It and Dash, but it is by the Backcountry Knitter, and I'll link them below. This is their sock, their um, sock yarn, I believe it is, Yes, it's an 8515 um, merino nylon blend. And this color is called Venta Valleys. So um, Backcountry Knitter was doing a trunk show at Yarn and Dash and I went and bought a lot of their sock yarn. I will actually pop a picture in of uh, the detail of this yarn because I feel like my camera is not really doing it credit and it's so, so beautiful. I think it's the most beautiful yarn I've ever used. It's just, Absolutely stunning. There's little flecks of all kinds of different colors in here. Um, I feel like the picture does it more justice. So I do, I love how these turned out. I think I wish that, I love this yarn and I love this design, but I think I wish I would have used um, a more solid yarn or like something with less interest in the yarn to show off the stitch design a little bit more because I feel like the yarn is kind of showing up this beautiful uh, lace design, but I think it's still, I mean, they still look really nice and fun. So um, this is a heel flap and gusset construction, which is my preferred construction for socks. I just find that they fit um, much better for me. Um, and that's just mostly what I do. I do prefer a top down sock with a heel and flap gusset construction. Did I miss anything? No. Yeah, so that's the Kutar socks. Okay, and my last finished object for today is a quilt. So um, I really love quilting. Um, at the beginning of 2021, I really went through like an obsession with quilting. I think I made like nine or 10 quilts in 2021, which is a lot. 
Um, but this year I kind of settled into a more comfortable <laughs> pace with it. So I think for me about one quilt a quarter, so like four to five quilts a year is a really good amount of quilting for me. I really enjoy making them, but it's a much more time consuming process for me. I can sit down and sew a dress in a day, you know, I can knit a pair of socks in a couple of weeks, but I find I really need to space out my quilting a little bit more because it's a little bit harder on um, your body too. Um, especially I do quilt all of my own quilts here. So like pushing that big quilt around <laughs> through the machine can be kind of a lot. So I have quilting at a little bit of a slower pace. So I'll try to give updates on it at the end of uh, each segment here, but I won't have as many quilted finished objects, but I do have one today. So this, I'll put a picture in first so you can see the whole thing. Um, this is the Enigmatic Quilt by Toad and Sew, um, and that's Taylor at Toad and Sew, and I love all of their patterns. They are just so modern and interesting um, and cool. I made another one of her quilts last year that was kind of inspired by like MC Escher, and it's just, she has a very um, cool modern aesthetic. And she always picks really nice like color combos and everything. So um, she announced she was going to be doing an eight week mystery knit along, or I'm sorry, knit along, quilt along. <laughs> so yeah, but I was going to say, you know, I've seen mystery knit alongs, but I had never seen a mystery quilt along. And I thought that was a cool, fun idea. And I have a bunch of um, ex ooh, leftover quilting uh, fabric and scraps in this cabinet. That's what I keep in here. And so I thought, okay, I'll make like a scrappy version or just use whatever I have in stash. Um, and it'll be fun and it kind of paces it out for you, which is what I like in my quilting process. So I signed up for her mystery quilt along um, and it was super fun. So each week, a little bit of the pattern and process was like unlocked. So you kind of, kind of forced you to pace yourself cause you couldn't get ahead of it. So like the first week we picked our fabrics and then we um, cut out our fabrics and then there was like three to four weeks of piecing blocks and then assembling the quilt and quilting and etc. So yeah, here is the version that I made. Um, I have been wanting to make a warm neutral quilt for a while. And I had all of these fabrics in my sash um, from leftover from other projects. So it just kind of worked out perfectly. And um, I really like how it turned out. It's a little bit more traditional than I was expecting but I really love it. It's just very soft and it'll go um, really well in any of the rooms in our home or I might even take this one to work because our office is so cold. Um, yeah, so the finished size is 61 by 77 inches and it is now available to buy as a full pattern. So if you didn't participate in the quilt along but you really like this design, you can find it um, under the enig enigmatic quilt hashtag and I'll put that um, down below. Um, and I do, like I said, I quilt all of my own quilts here on my um, domestic machine. And sometimes that's a little tricky when they're huge. Um, I do sometimes also quilt by hand or I enjoy like tying a quilt. Um, but this one I did quilt um, on my machine. And I, I really enjoy designing um, the quilting, you know, the actual like stitching over the top. And I try, I tend to try and follow the design of the quilt pattern itself. So for this one, um, I can show you, actually, I have it here. Here it is. <laughs> so yeah, this is my enigmatic quilt. I keep wanting to call it the enigma quilt. Um, so you can see, I just, for the quilting, I just kind of followed the outline of the um, snowball circles. And then I went around the inside as well. And then in the interior, I just did this kind of um, grid on all of them. So I kept it pretty simple. But yeah, after I washed it, I got this super nice quilty crinkle, which I just love. I love snuggling up under a quilt. It's my favorite. Um, and then the backing is this um, gray, and it's actually an old sheet. Um, my partner and I recently bought our first home, and we upsized to a king size bed, so I just kept our old queen flat sheets to use as quilt backing um, because not only are they very cozy, but it's easier to just use a big sheet than have to piece your quilt back together, in my opinion. So yeah, that is my enigmatic quilt. 
it, it's a really fun one and a pretty quick, um, comes together pretty quick for anyone who's interested. I actually think this would be a really good, like, first quilt pattern or beginner quilt pattern if you want something a little bit more interesting than, you know, just like half square triangles or something like that because it basically is just half square triangles and like snowball corners, which is very similar to a half square triangle, but it makes this really interesting, like, circular kind of interlocking design. So that's it for my finished objects, and now I'm gonna move into whips. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about my works in progress now. Um, and I do just wanna say for sewing, which I do a lot of, um, I my fabric stash was getting a little bit too um, big for my storage situation. So for the past like three or four months, I've really been only sewing from stash, and I've made a really good dent in it, but I'm still working through it. Um, and I don't, I don't have a huge stash, but I also don't have a huge amount of storage for it. So, um, my next sewing project is going to be a Heather Blazer hack. Um, and I'll put a picture here of the Heather Blazer, and then I'll put a picture of um, the sketch of what I'm going to make my version as. So this is a pattern by Friday Pattern Company. And let me see the sizes. Yes, it's up to a 60 inch bust and a 63 inch hip. I am making the size XXL and I am planning to make my version as a vest and it's going to be two-tone. So it's going to be light gray on one side, dark gray on the other side, and then like the pockets will be the opposite. So here are my fabrics. I got these at a fabric swap last year. So you can see there's not a huge contrast. That's pretty accurate right there. Um, but they're both wool, they're woven, um, like a plain weave wool blend. And one is a little bit more of a mid gray and the other is a pretty dark charcoal gray. So this will be the light side. Oh no, I have that backwards. This is gonna be the dark side and this is gonna be the light side. So yeah, I think that's gonna be really cute. Um, I have assembled the pattern and cut out all the pieces. So I just need to start sewing it. So hopefully next time I talk to you all, that will be a finished object. Um, and I'm very excited to have it as a layering piece. I feel like I've seen tons and tons of really cute vests lately. Um, and uh, my work is more hybrid now. So I do get to dress up for the office a little bit more, which I enjoy. So I think this will have a good, find a good place in my wardrobe. My second whip is knitting and it's very exciting so uh, the first knitting podcast that i really really got into was um rebecca's from the crea Bea, and i actually um started this test knit for her before i started watching her podcast um, but since then i've binged the whole thing and she's just delightful and um kind of inspired me to try this myself honestly but yeah i am participating in her Dorney sweater test knit. I'll put a picture of her version here. It is an all over cable knit sweater um, with a raglan yoke and increases. Um, and it's been so fun to knit. So let me show you what I have. I'm almost done. <laughs> I just have a little bit of one sleeve left. So let me scoot back here a little. All right, so here's my Dorney. Hopefully, hopefully you can still hear me. Um, so I am making this in Derry Room Natura um, Serrano, which is their Aran weight. And the color is Quartz, which it's this really lovely dusty pink. Um, that color is pretty accurate. It, gets, it tends to get kind of blown out, but it's a quite a light pink. Um, but it has little flecks of gray from the base um, wool and it's super super nice. So uh, Yeah, this is a nine-week test knit I believe and I started this on December 1st and it is now January 1st and I've knit almost the entire thing and To be fair, it is very cropped but still <laughs> That's pretty fast for me. I this is only going to be my third finished knitted garment I mostly have been doing socks and accessories, but I'm really starting to get more into garment making or garment knitting. Um, so yeah, I can't believe how fast this project has flown. Um, it is Erin Waite 
and that is probably contributing to it. Um, size five needles, five mm needles. Um, but yeah, I just love it. And I can't wait to block it because the cables are very stretchy. So I think it's gonna block a lot. Um, I actually sized into the size five, but I'm testing the size six um, because I do like quite an oversized sweater. And when I applied, I said I could do five or six and um, I was allowed into the six. So it's gonna be super cute, chunky, oversized crop sweater. Um, and I do mostly wear my knitted sweaters with a skirt or a dress. So I do prefer to hit them to hit me like right around the natural waist. And as I said, I have a very short torso. So not a ton of knitting on the body for me, <laughs> which is nice, but um, yeah. So it goes, this pattern is gonna go up to 170 centimeter bust which is great. And I know Rebecca is very passionate about um, size inclusivity in her patterns, which I am also passionate about and love to see. So yeah, I am probably going to finish this tomorrow, hopefully. Um, I just have a little bit, I'm about halfway through this sleeve. So I'm really hoping, hope, hoping, hoping to finish that up tomorrow and I can't wait to wear it. Um, this is the first time I've done a double folded collar and I love how it looks. I'm a little bit worried that it might be too chunky for me in this yarn um, when it's finished, but I really look forward to blocking it and seeing how it softens because this fabric, um, this yarn really does change a lot. When I uh, blocked my swatch, it really softened up a lot and got a lot more drape because right now the whole thing's a bit stiff, <laughs> but I think once I block it, it's gonna be really nice. And I'm just now noticing this is like, my skin tone so maybe that's gonna look weird but i just love this color and this yarn it's very round and springy um so yeah i will say one tip for working with this yarn um i actually bought this yarn for a different sweater project at the beginning of last year um and i ended up just not liking it i re-knit the body like twice and i think ultimately i just had to accept that it wasn't for me uh, so I kind of had this yarn in stash, and that's why I was so excited for this test knit, because um, I was like, I already have this yarn, this will be perfect. Um, but I did find, because the yarn, maybe I can show you here. The yarn is very round and quite sp springy and firm. And at first, I found it really hard to work with, um, and it was hard on my hands. And I do prefer um, wooden needles, and maybe that's part of it. But um, let me put this down. A tip that I found that really helped me was to use, to go down a needle size on the left hand needle, the one that's just holding the stitches, um, and then use the correct needle size in the right hand needle or vice versa, you know, if you're left handed, um, your dominant hand needle, um, the one that's making the new stitches, because that is the only needle, that's the needle that is determining your gauge. So like when you slip your new stitch off, the width of that needle is what's determining the size of your stitch, not the width of the needle that's just holding the stitch. Um, and I found that using that smaller needle to hold the stitches made it so much easier to work with. Um, so I also do that with mohair, because um, I find sometimes mohair on the wooden needles is a bit sticky, um, but going down a needle size on that left hand needle really makes it so much easier to work with, at least for me. So I would definitely recommend that with this yarn. But I've come to really like this yarn and it softens up so much after blocking. So I can't wait to block this and finish it. And I think next time that's gonna be a finished object. So very excited about that. All right, one more knitting whip. And I should say, I have a couple more <laughs> that I'm not gonna show today uh, because this is already kind of an overstuffed episode. So um, next week I'll show you some whips um, that I've been working on for a while. Um, these two I'm showing you today are the ones I've been actively knitting on in the past like week or so. Um, but I have a couple more that I'm still very excited about. They just haven't been getting as much attention lately and I'll share those next week. So my other whip, and I should say, I will always have a sock whip. As soon as I finish a pair, I cast on another pair <laughs> and that's just kind of how I roll. So I'll always have some amount of sock to show you hopefully. So um, this year and last year actually, I participated in the Winter Wishes sock swap 
which is organized by Jess at uh, La Mercerie on Instagram at Shop La Mercerie. And this has become like my favorite holiday tradition. I just love this. So you sign up um, on the website and you put in a little bit of your interest and you answer a couple of questions. Um, and then you get paired up with um, someone else who is participating. And um, this year I got paired up with another knitter also named Jess who was lovely and apps. So basically how it works is you send them a winter wishes sock box. So you send um, at least a hundred grams of sock yarn. And, um, but usually everyone sends like a bunch of other little stuff too, like tea or like, what did I send Jess this year? I sent um, sock yarn from a local yarn store and some tuft um, lip balm and I knitted her a little tiny tree sock ornament. Um, and what else? Oh, a cookie for her dog <laughs> and a project bag. And you know, it, it was just so lovely um, getting to know her and she's actually the one that turned me on to knitting podcasts. So thank you, Jess, <laughs> for inspiring me to do this. Um, but she sent me the most amazing box. I mean, there was sock yarn, but so many other things there was knitting accessories, tea, chocolate, um, more yarn. It was just, it really blew me away and was so generous. Um, and it was just so delightful. So I really strongly recommend participating in the Winter Witches Sock Swap if you can um, and you enjoy knitting socks. So um, the main sock yarn that Jess sent me, I'll put up here on the screen a picture of it um, in the skein. Um, it was from Witchfire Fiber Co. Let me make sure I got that right. Yes, oh, Witch Fiber, Witch Fire Fiber Arts. Um, and this was one of their sock sets. And the colors are Stalwart and Tender Hearted. And it is an 80-20 uh, blend merino nylon. Um, and it has a twist, which I like. Um, I haven't used a lot of sock yarns like that. I tend to use um, some singles and, you know, a few more like, I don't know, it's just a really nice yarn. Um, and I rarely have, um, I rarely buy sock sets. I have some minis that I won in like a giveaway, but I almost never use them because I just kind of forget about them. <laughs> so one of my goals this year is to use up all my minis on some fun socks. Um, but yeah, this was a lovely sock set. Um, and what I am making with it, my first socks of 2023, are the Glover socks from the Ready Set Socks book by Pom Pom, um, which I recently bought, which is also amazing. Um, loads of really cute patterns and I think it would be great if you wanted to learn how to knit socks but even as someone who knits a lot of socks I really still got a lot out of it um so I'm kind of trying to work through the patterns in that book as well so I am almost done with the first one so this is my almost finished Glover sock in the Witchfire Fibers sock set so I use the mini, um, which is a really lovely, like medium kind of foresty green um, for the cuff. And then I'm gonna use it for the toe as well, which I'm ready to start. So next thing is the toe. Um, and then this is a two by two broken rib um, pattern. If you can see that in the main yarn, which I am obsessed with this color. It's a beautiful like taupey neutral um, with flecks of like an inky blue, which I just love. I honestly, I'm making these for my partner, but I kind of want to keep them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm making these for my partner, Troy, who is very knit worthy, but he has not received any knits yet except for a couple of hats. Um, so yeah, he is getting his first pair of socks from me and I'm excited. He definitely needs more socks. Our house is cold, so I'm sure I'll be knitting more socks for him this year. Um, and yeah, these are all, oh, they're just really squashy and nice. I love broken rib. It's such a nice texture. Um, yeah, so I'm ready to start the toe on this one and I'm sure I will have these finished for next time. At least I hope I will. So um, yeah, that's my Glover sock. And um, as far as quilting whips, I just finished that enigmatic quilt, so I'm kind of just in the planning stages for my next quilting project, but I do know what I want to make. Um, I have had my eye on this pattern ever since it was released, and it is the Omega Quilt by Miss Make, and I'll put it up on the, I'll put a picture of it here on the screen. Um, it's this really cool, like, wavy checkerboard 
design and I love the checkerboard trend but I don't really have any of it um, in my life yet so I know that I want to make this um, I just need to go get fabric for it so hopefully in the next week or two I'll be able to hit up a local thrift store and find um, some old sheets or something I, I always do this for my quilts I like really especially for quilting like to use secondhand materials um, because new quilting cotton is very expensive it is lovely I love Kona cotton, it's a little bit heavier, like art gallery is super cool, handed and nice, but um, I feel like I tend to splurge on my yarn and my garment fabric and I can't justify it as much <laughs> with my quilts because um, I also use my quilts really hard. Like they go outside, the cats are all over them, like they get a lot of use and love and I think that that's great and that's how it should be. Um, but I tend to not be precious about them so I tend to use cheaper materials. So when I'm looking for uh, secondhand materials for my quilts, I do always make sure if I'm using like a bed sheet or something that it's clean, it doesn't have any stains on it. And then of course I wash them, um, you know, when I get them home, um, which normally with quilting fabric, you don't wash it first because you want to get that like shrinkage, um, which causes the crinkle the first time you wash it. But of course, when you're using secondhand fabrics, I would suggest washing them. Um, but I've had really good luck with this strategy so far. So I'm looking forward to going and finding some fabrics for this in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think I'd really like it to be neutral, like maybe like a cream and like a rust or um, something like that. But part of the fun of using secondhand materials is just seeing what's out there and seeing what you can find. So I try not to go in with too much of a specific expectation and just see what's there and what inspires me while I'm looking. So. I do think I will do two-tone though, so probably just two colors. Um, so yeah, so that's gonna be my next quilting project. And that's it for whips. So I will move on to some acquisitions. All right, so my family and I recently celebrated Christmas and I always like to take Christmas as an opportunity to ask for um, mostly things that I need, but also some crafty things. So, and sometimes they overlap. <laughs> So the first thing I have is um, a bottle of soak wash. Um, this is my preferred wool wash. Um, I do use the unscented. I have a lot of skin sensitivities um, and anything with fragrance tends to really irritate me and makes me really itchy and it's kind of miserable. So I do use their unscented or scentless, sorry, uh, wool wash. And I actually, this came in a set with a big wash tub. Um, and it's pretty big, which is nice because I uh, frequently monopolize our bathroom sink with blocking my nets. <laughs> and I'm sure my partner doesn't love that. So now I have a designated bin to block them in um, and another bottle of soak. And I, I got a bottle of this, the same size at the beginning of 2021, and I still have some left. So, you know, a little bit goes a long way. And one bottle this size does tend to last me about a year or more. Um, so I feel like maybe every year for Christmas, I'll just ask for another bottle and <laughs> replenish it. Um, my second acquisition is the De La Q circular needle case. Um, and I first saw this on a trip to New York that I took in the fall. And I went into Argyle Yarn Shop in Brooklyn, which is amazing. If you ever get a chance to go there, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it is so cute and they had a lot of brands that I've never seen um, before um, in the US, like in person, like Hedgehog Fibers and um, Galere Alpaca, which I bought some of and is another whip that I'll show you next week. And um, they just had really interesting, unique yarns and they also dye a ton of their own yarn and their in-house brand is called Luminous Brooklyn, um, which is also beautiful. I bought some sock yarn from them. It's a lovely, lovely shop. <laughs> I wish I could go back more often, but my bank account probably wishes I didn't, so that's good. Um, but anyway, I saw these needle cases there, and I knew I was going to ask for one um, for Christmas because my needles are pretty organized, um, except for my fixed circulars, which were not, because, you know, they get a little unruly and tangly. So, yeah, I asked for this in the indigo color, which they are um, naturally dyed, and the bags were made by hand. So it has, like, a little carrying handle... Um, and it has a zip around three sides. And then when you open it, it has accordion pockets. So I think it has like 11 or 12 pockets. Um, and I just kind of wrapped up my needles 
and then organize them by needle size. So you could definitely fit multiple needles in each um, opening, but I just have them going from smallest to largest. And they're super tidy in there and easy to find um, instead of being in a jumbled mess. So that is an exciting recent acquisition for me. Um, and one more acquisition, which I actually just received last night. Um, we have a New Year's Eve party with a bunch of friends that we do every year. And um, my friend Kajal is so generous and she is always giving us gifts and um, she's just such a sweet person. And uh, last night she had some yarn for me and said that when she saw it, it made her think of me and I just thought that was the sweetest thing. So I wanted to share it all for, with you too because it's really beautiful. So uh, we actually have a new local yarn shop here in Columbus called Dye Mad Yarns. And um, I believe the dyer has been working under that name for quite a while, um, several years here, but they just opened a brick and mortar shop. And I haven't, um, I haven't been over to visit it yet, but I'm hoping to soon. So um, I think she must have done a pop-up and my friend saw this there. So um, this is this game. You can see their logo, logo there, Dye Mad Yarns. Um, and it's really fun. Most of their colorways are based off of like funny things in Ohio, um, which is very witty and like self-deprecating and I love that. Um, so this is their Gladys shawl base. Um, it's 70% merino, 30% silk. So it has quite a bit of drape and it's super, super soft. Um, it is a single, so I don't know if you can see that, um, but it's really, really pretty colors. It, the base is kind of like a very light gray or light lilac. Um, and then it has touches of teal and lime green and purple and some little speckles throughout. Um, and it is 438 yards. So I feel like it's a, almost more of a lace weight. Like it's very, very thin. Um, and this colorway is called Aquarius. So they did a whole um, Zodiac collection. And I actually have a skein of their Sagittarius colorway on sock yarn because I'm a Sagittarius. So that will be my sock cast on next November. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm gonna have to find something really special to do with this. Um, it's super soft. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find a special project for this. So if you have any recommendations for what to do with a merino silk shawl weight, one skein, please let me know below because I want a special project for this. and. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to plug it in yet. So I would love to hear any suggestions that you have. And that's it for acquisitions. Okay, and lastly, um, before I head out, I just um, wanted to share a few things that I'm loving right now that aren't necessarily crafting related. They may be sometimes, but um, just things that are making me really happy right now. Um, so the first one is this recipe for orange rolls. I'll put a picture. Uh, they're pretty much like cinnamon rolls, but they are orange flavored uh, instead. And they have a cream cheese frosting. They're so, so delicious. Um, I love to cook and bake as well. Um, so there'll probably be a lot of recipes here in this segment. Um, but growing up, my mom always used to make the Pillsbury orange rolls out of the can that you have to like smash on the counter. And they're very nostalgic for me, especially around the holidays. So I found this recipe to make them from scratch and they are absolutely delicious. <laughs> they're not, you know, they're not exactly the same as the ones out of the can, but they're both delicious. These are amazing. Um, they do take a while to make. It's about a little over three hours total, but it would be a great like Sunday morning activity because there's a lot of passive time. You know, you make the dough, you make the icing, etc. but then they just have to sit for like a few hours. So you could get these started, do some knitting, have a wonderful Sunday morning, and then have some fresh orange rolls and they're just delicious. So I will link that recipe below. Um, the second thing is a TV show that I'm a little late to the party on, um, but it's delightful. So it's called Only Murders in the Building. I know I'm very late to this. The, uh, both seasons have been out for a while and I just finished them both. Um, but I'm not like a huge true crime person. Um, I like some true crime, not a ton. I'm not like a big true crime podcast junkie, although I do enjoy them from time to time. But this show is really uh, funny and self-aware. So it's Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. And they're, they all live in this fancy apartment building on the Upper West Side in New York. And there's a murder in their building. 
and they create a true crime podcast as they're trying to solve the murder and it's just very funny um, and they're all good in it. I binged both seasons in like a week, I think. So uh, if you're looking for a little New Year binging, it's a good one. I think it's on Hulu in the US. So recommend that. Um, and the last thing is a tea. So I love tea. I know us knitters and our tea, it's kind of a thing. Um, but I really do love tea, especially black tea and flavored black teas. So um, one of my favorite tea brands is called Big Heart Tea Company. And every year at the holidays, um, for the past few years, they've had this tea called Rosy and Bright, which I have some here. Um, it comes in this really cute little box that looks like a house. Look how cute is that? Um, and it is a black, let's see what it says. It's a black tea with rose, hibiscus, and cinnamon. So it's kind of like a spicy black tea. Um, and sometimes I'm very sensitive to rose. I don't like too much of a rose flavor, but this blend is just exactly right. Like for me, it's so, so good. So if you're looking for an interesting um, holiday tea um, that's not necessarily like the traditional Christmas flavors, um, I really recommend this. I just bought like four boxes of it because you can only get it around this time of year and it's my favorite. So I definitely stocked up. And that is gonna do it for me today. So just a couple things before I head out here. Um, I will be going back to work in a couple of days. So as I said, I probably won't be quite as insanely productive as I have been. This is not a normal level of output for me. I've just had a lot of time off, which was lovely. And I feel very rested now and ready to go back to work. Um, I am hoping to release a video every two weeks. Um, you know, life happens, sometimes it might not be exact, but I'm hoping to record about every two weeks. Um, yeah, and I'd love to know what you're working on. Um, please leave a comment below. Let me know what your whips are, what your favorite project is right now, um, if you finished anything over the holidays. Um, and please do let me know if you have any suggestions for my um, shawl yarn, my lace weight uh, merino silk yarn, because I really want to cast it on soon. And I think that's it. So thank you so much for watching. Um, again, if you want to follow along with me, best place is probably Instagram. You can find me on there at Sarah underscore seams. And uh, if you made it this far, I hope you'll come back and watch again in a few weeks. Um, Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Bye.